Hey guys, it's been a little while since I made a video, but I realized that since a lot of changes have happened in Unity recently, it would probably be a good idea to do a quick, or as quick as I can make it, rundown of just how to utilize the new high definition render pipeline and some of the things that you might want to watch out for when you're working on it. I don't think this is going to be a comprehensive discussion of absolutely everything, but it should be a way that you can jump into this with a little more familiarity and know how to utilize some of the features that used to exist in other means, as well as show you some of the ways that it's actually kind of neat to get running. So this will not, again, be every single thing that you could possibly do, and I'm not going to be showing the most advanced advanced possible ideas, but it, it, should, it should get you on the right track. So uh, first of all, if you're not familiar with this, you need to use the package manager in order to get your project set up for the HD render pipeline. So that's going to be window package manager. Um, and then I have that open over here on the side, but... So you'll see that it says in project, there's a default set of projects. What you want to do is click on the tab for all, and then you want to look for the packages that you're going to need. In this case, I'm going to use the post-processing, the render pipelines core, and the render pipelines high definition, which will get me roughly where I need to be. So all you have to do to set that up is that you can click on one of these. So like, for example, I'm going to select the render pipelines core, and then I'm going to click install and it should go through that whole process. Then you wanna do the same thing for your render pipelines high definition. And last, we're gonna go into the uh, post-processing stack and uh, download that as well. So the post-processing stack you may have some more familiarity with, uh, so I will also touch on that uh, briefly, but I don't want to focus too much on that particular aspect because we can go into it in more detail in maybe another video. Um, post-processing stack is great, and it's actually pretty easy to write your own post-processes. So overall, uh, once you get an idea of how that stuff works, there's actually a lot of flexibility there. So now I'm also able to download the shader graph, which is actually really awesome, and it's one of the reasons we ended up switching our project uh, to Unity 2018. But for right now, that's kind of a separate lesson, but just know that in order to use the shader graph, you do have to have the uh, either the high def render pipeline or the lightweight render pipeline, at least as of this video and you have to install it through the packages manager in order to do that. So you'll notice that nothing has changed here currently. So I actually have to activate my HD render pipeline. And if I go into say under edit, um, there's render pipeline, and then there's a, a number of options that relate to um, render pipelines that are not easily understood if I'm not clear on how to actually get them initially. So uh, for example, that I can upgrade project materials to high definition materials. Um, but if I did that, it's not going to actually work as intended. So what I need to do first is I need to make sure that I'm actually using the render pipeline. So how I do that is I go to edit project settings, graphics, and then you'll notice that at the top of the graphics menu, there is a scriptable render pipeline settings. And this says that there is no asset there. So I need to go ahead and actually create an asset for this that will be kind of my management of my render pipeline. So I'm going to right click on my assets folder. I'm just going to make a folder called configs because that's usually where I sort these. Um, and then I'm just going to make a folder called render pipeline. Um, and then inside this folder, obviously you can create it anywhere, but I'm going to go to create rendering high definition render pipeline asset. And by default, this should be fully usable. Um, I can just plug this into that graphics setting and it'll work, but I can also create a couple more assets. So I can go to rendering high definition render pipeline resources, and then I can create a rendering diffusion profile settings. Um, so just so this uh, clarifies, in a lot of cases, you're not gonna need to change the resources. This is a little bit more of an advanced user um, system. Like you can do things like changing what the default uh, decal materials are, mirrors, diffusion, etc. There's a bunch of different shader settings. Um, and there's, so there's a lot of different information that you can edit and set if you're building this resource. 
the reason that you would do that rather than using the default is if you look at my HD render pipeline asset, it actually has a HD render pipeline resources item, but this is actually grayed out because it's included in the package, which is an external set of files and you can't actually use that uh, to make edits. So I always think it's kind of a good idea to just make the template of the assets that I'm going to use. So in my new HD render pipeline asset, I'm actually just gonna drag my HD render pipeline resources into here. I don't need to change anything about it, but I know that if I do have to change something, I don't have to create the asset uh, from scratch. Um, and then the diffusion profile, um, I'm going to actually drag that in there and then we'll explain that for a second. Um, this isn't going to have a huge impact unless you kind of know how it works. But basically this has to do with things like light transmission and um, properties related to the thickness and uh, surfaces that you're working with. So there's things like, there's default profiles, they can all be named. Um, you can change things related to their scattering distance. There's refraction information. So basically you're trying to figure out how light interacts with things that are m moving through surfaces. Um, and that can be, for, for example, with light, transmitting through tree leaves, or you can also talk about refraction in transparent objects and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this is actually pretty useful and it's nice that you have direct control over this because when you pick a lot of those settings, you actually get to define which profiles they're using and they're all easily nameable and you can make a bunch of variations so that different surfaces can have different properties, which is uh, again, probably something you don't have to do a ton of editing unless you kind of know how this works. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it too much for right now. But now that we've got those three pieces um, with the HD render pipeline asset being the most important one, we can go ahead and go back to edit, project settings, graphics, and I'm just gonna plug this in right here. Now you'll notice all this stuff gets messed up. And the reason that that's happening is that suddenly the new render pipeline requires a different set of shaders or it requires a different, um, different uh, shader instructions because there are some shader instructions that get shared between this pipeline and the other pipeline. There are a handful of materials that will still work. But in general, if I say hit this, uh, grab this slot here and then hit delete, it goes back to the previous pipeline, but it does break lighting and everything like that. But currently there's no reason to... Um, to worry about that too much because we're actually converting this over to the HD render pipeline. I do not recommend that you just transition back and forth between different pipelines. You're probably gonna wanna pick a pipeline and stick with it um, because this is gonna require changes to assets in order to make it function correctly. So now that we're actually here, you'll notice that in the console, it pointed out something, HD render pipeline doesn't support gamma mode, change to linear mode. You may have already done that in your project, but if you hadn't, you can go to edit project settings, player. And then in the color space option here, you can just change it from gamma to linear. Um, now that won't correct a whole lot, except it just means the background displays a little bit differently. Um, but so we can go ahead to the console, clear that out. And what we're gonna need to do is actually run some of those options that we had before in the edit menu for actually getting this stuff to display correctly. So I'm gonna go to edit, render pipeline um, and if you're doing this on a full project, you can say upgrade project materials to high definition materials. Um, you can also say upgrade selected materials to high definition materials if you're just selecting a set of them. Um, that might be safer if your project has thousands of materials and you're trying to do it individually so you're like saving yourself on time. Um, there's other options here. I don't think that you need to worry too much about these for right now. Like, so for example, upgrade all materials to latest version could be useful if these materials actually are no longer properly compatible if you're using the old version of the pipeline. Um, you can also use some things like, uh, if you know how uh, material keywords work, you can edit those. Um, you can also, there's this uh, upgrade all materials in mission color, and that's something we'll kind of talk about in a second. Um, but just go ahead and upgrade project materials to high definition materials. Um, this progress will overwrite materials in your project. Make sure you have a project backup. Um, hopefully, if you guys are like super serious about this, you'll be using version control of some kind, um, in which case this is not a major concern. But if you aren't, I definitely recommend making a copy of your project, um, but also just getting version control like Git or Perforce or something like that because it's better. All right, so go ahead and hit proceed. Now, if you have a large project, this is gonna take a really long time. I have like a kind of test project where I just grabbed a few assets 
from um, <laughs> from my, my larger project. And I'm just using these as kind of examples. Um, now, you'll notice that a lot of this stuff isn't going to exactly work quite as expected. Um, and one of the reasons for that is because this default material is actually not the correct default material anymore. So um, if you remember, we, we made our resources here. Um, and this is one thing that uh, it looks like sometimes the upgrade has a little bit of trouble with. If you uh, create a new asset, so if I go to game object, 3D object, and I create a sphere, for example, um, although the lighting looks really messed up right now, you'll notice that that's actually displaying and it's not pink, but it actually is using this material by default called default HD material. Um, and so because I have some of these materials that are actually materials that I didn't make, it's just the default material, um, I can find the um, default material that I would need to use. Um, let's see, so it, it's not gonna be searchable there. Um, but I can go into my packages and I can see that actually default HD material is there. And so on this plane, for example, um, if I go to, you see, I've got my assets and my packages. I can go to packages, um, HD render pipeline, HDRP. Um, let's see, I think material is where we're gonna look for that. Um, okay, so actually let me, I think probably the easiest way to find this is in the packages. Then I'm going to search uh, default HD. Then I'm gonna make sure instead of in assets, I'm searching in packages. Then I have my default HD material and I can go ahead and select that plane, for example. I can drag that default HD material onto here. And then I can just do that for each of these objects. So for example, I have all of these that are uh, the, they need to be using the default HD material. So I can go ahead and, well, actually wait, I wanna make sure. I'm grabbing all the ones that actually need to be selected in this case. Um, now this will not be a problem if you're not using the, the default material, which hopefully wouldn't be in a large amount, but this is one thing that I've noticed that the, um, the auto generate system doesn't really handle very well. Um, now you'll notice that this uh, lighting looks insane, right? So I actually had to restart my Unity in order to make sure I resolved this problem. Um, I wish I could give a better answer than this, but what I basically found was that if I restarted Unity, um, that issue um, resolved itself. Now, this HD render pipeline is currently a little bit in flux, so there's a lot of things that are working partially or um, in some cases maybe not fully working as intended. So as of this uh, current version, which I believe I'm using uh, Unity 2018.2.15. This is the um, basically the current state of things, but ideally this system will work out a little bit better in the future. So what um, I want to explain is that when you go to render pipeline, you upgrade project materials to high definition materials. It should transition all of the materials to something that's compatible with the HD render pipeline. And actually it also corrects automatically when you switch pipelines to the um, lighting intensity that is necessary to get the correct visual result roughly comparative to what the previous uh, lighting is. So if you look at the uh, edit render pipeline, it says upgrade scene light intens intensity for high definition. Um, it will likely do that automatically if the scene was currently active. If there's some reason it doesn't do that, you can attempt to make the upgrade with this button. But there are some aspects of this uh, tool chain that are a little bit in flux. So um, in my exposure so far, if there's something that is problematic, there may be some different reasons for it. But in this case, all I had to do was uh, restart Unity. Now, you will definitely note that this lighting no longer looks correct. Um, if you go to the lighting tab, um, there's gonna be this generic skybox cube map thing, but it's not really working. Um, What's important to note is that actually the intensity multiplier here is also set down to zero. Most of the changes to the HD render pipeline don't actually involve settings for environment lighting or environment reflections directly through this lighting scene tab. And that seems a little bit counterintuitive. Um, I was initially thinking that it was just straight up because this system is broken. 
But the reality is that the new system incorporates a lot more functionality than you might expect. And so I want to make sure that I explain that to you, show you some of the benefits of it, and show you what the easiest way is to get to parity with the original scene. So before we do that, let's really quickly take a look um, at what the material upgrade system does. So a good example would be that I have um, this dishwasher asset here. Um, it's a little hard to see, so I'm going to turn off lighting for a second. Um, we'll fix the lighting in a second. But in the kitchen dishwasher asset, you'll notice that if I click on the dishwasher, it now says HD render pipeline slash lit is the current lighting that's being used. Um, and it actually has a whole different structure for which textures are being applied. In this case, I had an AO map, a metallic roughness map. Um, and now you'll notice here that it has this thing called a mask map. And it looks like kind of these weird colors. But this is actually kind of neat because Unity does automatically generate these from the textures that you had previously. So if I go to my source assets textures, um, you'll notice that I have an AO map and I have a metallic map, which includes my you know metallic roughness, which you know this asset's really simple. But basically, you can get around having to completely reauthor all of your content by using that generate. Um, HD render pipeline materials setting because it'll actually try to convert the assets uh, into a new asset that is compatible with this system. Now that's not a perfect workflow and obviously it would be best if you did it yourself because you have a little bit more control over it, but this does get you so that you're up and running really quickly. So I'm just gonna quickly explain some of the changes in the new lit shader. Um, obviously you have options like opaque and transparent um, material type can be standard, subsurface scattering, anisotropy, irradiance, specular color, translucent, etc. Um, there's a bunch of different settings that are going to apply differently to different things. So, for example, you can have enabling decals, all that kind of stuff. If you needed to use uh, vertex or pixel displacement, that's something that's an option that you can explore. Um, there's wind options. Um, obviously, the base color opacity map um, is what used to be essentially the main text or the main texture or the albedo. You have options for setting things like metallic. Um, there's a smoothness remapping, which is actually a really nice way of handling this, which is that now you have a smoothness map um, from the mask map and you can decide what the new minimum maximum values are, which is actually a pretty nice way of doing this so that you can have a little bit more of an artist tweak on this without having too much um, difficulty with it. The same thing is true with the ambient occlusion, you can reduce or increase the contribution of ambient occlusion by scaling that remap. But basically, um, this is an optimization step, and uh, some people who use Unreal Engine will probably be a little bit more familiar with this kind of process. But basically, now they use a mask map to save on overall texture memory and just accessibility. Um, so you have the metallic in the red channel, the AO in the green channel. The um, D is actually, I believe it's the detail. Um, and then the, um, like the detail mask. And then the um, S is the, um, the smoothness is in the alpha. Now you also have a, a normal map, a bent normal map and a coat mask. And these are things that are relating to more advanced uh, shader options. I'll probably do a separate tutorial where we just talk about shaders in more depth and how you can maximize these things. Um, but basically, then you have your detail inputs, which is actually kind of a neat um, variation that they actually pack the detail map for both the, uh, the grayscale detailing and then also the normal map um, into this, uh, this single uh, detail mapping. So you have the, uh, the A, which is basically gonna be your, um, the alpha contribution of the or rather the albedo contribution of your detail. So it's gonna be a grayscale value. Um, then you have the normal map Y and the normal map X in actually the G and A, which is kind of, it sounds super weird, um, but it's that's basically the way that you can arrive at um, having higher resolution for the, the normal map and then the, the shader stitches it together. And then the last bit is that you actually have your smoothness map, uh, which modifies the smoothness. And so you can actually modify the smoothness of the a property by uh, plugging that in. So um, if you have, for example, if you had already had a detail map, normal and albedo in here, 
um, then that would apply here. So I'm going to go more in depth about this stuff in the future. So I'm not going to worry too much about this right now. Um, but I do want to give you a basic idea of just like what the the, the main differences are with the, the shaders there. Um, 